Good evening, everybody. That is it. That is it. The transfer window is done. We have battered the videos all day here on NFTV. Johnny started the day off very early this morning. I did a quick one of Freddie Woodman. Carl done one about Matt Target. I've just done one about Dan Byrne. And now me and Johnny are back. Uh, back talking about... Um, we're going to do a summary of all the transfer window, but we're going to do like a timeline today because it is deadline day. We're going to look at the squad because four players need cut unless one of them has managed to get a move after the transfer window. What I mean by that is that can still happen as long as you've got the registration through. So we could see like a Jeff Hendrick get through, for example. So we'll talk about that and we're going to um, pick the start in 11 with all these new signings. Some of care. So, some, some to look forward to. So if you are watching live, thank you very much for popping along. I can see you in the comments as well. Very good window. Such huge improvements. And Ollie said, hi all. What would you give this transfer window out of 10? I'd go 8 out of 10. Go on, Johnny. You can score that one. Um, I think eight's a very fair mark. I, I, I probably would have. I probably would have gone with a seven. I think seven's probably a fair mark. Um, we've got in terms of the in terms of positions. I'm happy with the majority of the business in terms of the positions that's been done. I think pers the actual personnel of the positions. I think that's why it's not as high. But look, considering what we normally have, we've got to be happy with what we've what we've, what we've been given because. You know, it's been it's been tough over the last few years. Has I seen a stat that we've spent this just this January transfer window? I think it's the same as the last decade. Or like, actually, I might be wrong on that. I'm sure I've it's seen incredible. that on my dinner when I was when I was looking at on and um, on Twitter earlier on today on my dinner. But yeah, welcome to the latest video, uh, members as ever. I get exclusive stuff. Uh, you get the latest on Greenwood and Mullen show. You get a little few updates from me as well. So. And you also get the Discord, which is always good. And um, a new feature, which is coming to members as well. They're going to pick the away music for away vlogs. Yes, something new for <laughs> members as well. So that'll be interesting to see. So I don't get the, the blame for it anymore because people didn't like the Chava music. Um, so anyways, we'll get back to um, uh, today's topic. We're going to share the screen. I'm going to do, we're going to use the Chronicles website because they've been keeping a, a timeline of what's been going on today. Uh, we'll make that full screen so everybody at home can see it. We'll go through it. Uh, there is a lot. And obviously, it starts off. We're going to start off around about dinner time. So all the tickets have been sold out. Um, the first one, Johnny, Freddie Woodman. Uh, we knew one goalkeeper was going to go. And we did expect it would be Freddie Woodman. Bournemouth thought they've just signed Todd Campbell in the last few minutes. And they've signed um, Nat Phillips as well. And they've gone for Woodman. The, 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 they're spending the wages. But I said earlier on, I don't think his future is at Newcastle. I think... You know, he had his time right at the beginning of the season and I didn't think... He was, yes, I know the defence didn't help him out, but he didn't save us any games. In particular, Old Trafford springs to mind. I thought it was awful, but what do you make of that move? Yeah, sensible move. I think, look, Newcastle can't have four goalkeepers in their squad for the second half of the season. One of them needed to go. But obviously, Dubravka and Darlow aren't going to go. Gillespie knows, knows where he stands. He is third-choice goalkeeper. When Freddie Woodman's not available, Freddie Woodman needs to go out and get games. So I think it's a good move for him to get pressure on him because Bournemouth now have had a fantastic window or fantastic transfer deadline day. Like you've mentioned there, Nat Phillips, Todd Cantwell, Freddie Woodman. That's three Premier League players. Um, they've got Dan Belly from Peterborough as well, who's a fantastic talent. So that's another player under the radar. I think personally, it's it, for him. He's got to think, I've got to get promoted with this club because if he does get promoted with this club, I think there's a deal to be done in the summer because I think Newcastle are obviously looking for another goalkeeper, looking for a number one in the summer. Um, and that will mean Freddie will be number four, like the fourth choice goalkeeper, essentially, if you're looking at the pecking order right now. So I think it's a sensible move. And I, I think it'll probably, if, if, if it works well for them in terms of Bournemouth, he, he'll probably be Bournemouth number one and we'll probably sell him to Bournemouth. Which I'm not against anymore. Like I'm, I'm, I'm not against it because I wasn't. I, 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 a couple of years ago, I was like, you know, we're going to keep him. I just, I just don't think. I just don't think he'll ever be Newcastle's number one. I really don't, especially with the, with the money involved now at Newcastle. I just don't see it happening. And obviously, Dean Henderson was strongly linked, and I think that's yeah. something that we'll look in the summer. So, yeah, there's a lot of praise for the owners in the comments as well, which is nice to see. Obviously, me and Johnny um, spoke to me about it. Uh, very briefly uh, the other day on um, Sunday. It was yesterday, was it yesterday that? Just about yesterday, yes. 
Oh, I can't remember. It's been that long of a day at work. Yeah, so it was yesterday. Uh, there's some um, stuff on my socials if you um, want to see that. But we'll go back to the timeline, of course. Um, that should have been the Freddie Woodman bit. I don't know why it's jumped because of all the news, probably. So there's the Freddie Woodman news. Um, and then, obviously, Craig Hope. And this was the next one where we, we, th- we, we thought we're going to get Hugo and Kitty. I can't pronounce it. Johnny pronounced it. Ekatike. Ekatike. And um, obviously, Steve's a big fan of him. Steve was going nuts in the WhatsApp saying, we're going to sign him and all of this. Um, personal terms are not the issue, says Craig Hope. It's either whether Ekitike is ready to make the big move abroad at the moment. Decision time will be fast approaching, though, given the logistics and the, t- the deadline. Newcastle given it all. And obviously, the, the talks a little bit earlier, later on, the owners came out. Reams said he's going to stay um, with Newcastle. Uh, sorry, with Reams. Is this one that's... Got away, do you feel? Because he's a he's a obviously I don't I don't watch much league earn, but um is this one where you think wait a minute, this could have been a hot chop with blew it? A little bit. A little bit. Look, Newcastle, I think that this is one one of the biggest disappointments of today is that we couldn't get an attacking player over the line. And when you woke up this morning and you seen your phone, the first thing you saw was okay, TK deal. Back on Ekatike deal done almost except been accepted. That was our tagline this morning. The big had been had been had been accepted. I think this was always going to be an issue, and it was funny because we we when we spoke to Keith Downey a couple of months ago, he said expect a few players to turn us down because they're not too sure. No, it, there's obviously going to be a few players that have come, and obviously Guimaraes will will maybe touch about. Has probably looked at the long term vision. He's, you know, he, he probably sees himself in Newcastle for a long time. But you need to be looking at where Newcastle are right now. They're in the bottom three. You know, we need players essentially to kind of go in and get ready for the fight to get us at the bottom three. It's, it's lovely thinking on in two, three, four years' time, Newcastle could be in the top half, top six, top four, that sort of kind of plan to get there. But right now, we need to be 17th or higher. That's all we have to be this season. So, look, it's going to be very, very interesting to see what ha- happens in the future. But Ekatike not signing, it just seems that the player wasn't too sure. And sometimes if the player's not too sure, the deal doesn't get done. Because at the end of the day, I think the player has a lot more power than a club. If a, yeah. player, wants to, if a player wants to go or if a player wants to stay, ultimately that player will go or will stay. It's easy to stay at a club now. Um, and you've got to remember, he's only 19. He's only 19 years of age. He his is, price he, might shoot up if he continues his, you know, his form. So. Exactly. And you've got to think, he's 19. He's, it's his first full proper season of him being a first-team player. Eight goals and 18 appearances. He's flying. He's absolutely flying. He's on cloud nine. He's like, look, I just want to maybe, I just want a full season in France, playing football, and then I'll see where I am. If I want, if I want to go in the summer or X, Y, and Z, um, I don't blame Newcastle for trying to get this done. I really don't. I think they've obviously identified him as a main target and wanted to go back in for him. Um, I thought the lure of the Premier League would be enough to get this boy to to to, the, to Newcastle, but obviously he wasn't too sure, and the, he's decided and the club have decided together. Maybe it was just a bit too much too soon. But fair play to the club as well. Fair play to Rems because they could have been yeah. saying, no, no, you're going. You're going. I don't care if you're 19 or whatever. They've got like a, almost a duty of care, haven't they? So, um, Do you know my theory? Dis- dis- disappointed. I think he could potentially be Mbappe's replacement at Paris. Mbappe goes to Real Madrid. That's, what I, that's just what I'm thinking there. But You've got to look at Haaland as well, haven't you? Haaland's obviously going to be, everybody's going to be after Haaland and you know, Newcastle aren't going to be able to get Haaland regardless of the stay up or not because he's not going to come to us, but he could go to PSG. So I think it's an interesting one as well. But um, it, we don't know how good this boy is. We expect, we, we assume he's very, very good, but he, he, he might have a poor end to the season. He might only score one more goal or two more goals in the season, but he's a big boy, like 6 2, 6 3, pacey. You know, sort of good finishes from what, what you're seeing, like the YouTube, because that's only how we can judge him. Like I guess I, I, I mean, in particular, I don't still watch legal like yeah. Steve does every every two minutes. But it, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, have, we have to we have to we have to just just accept that this is what the situation was. 
Yeah, even at you, Elliot, as well, one of our members, he's saying it's the best transfer window in his lifetime. That's because I think Elliot's uh, a little bit younger than me and Johnny, to be honest with you. We've seen um, some disastrous ones through the years as well. Yeah, uh, sure. Even David uh, Guimaraes will single hand the reason we'll stay up. Wow, that's, that is some praise as well. Some praise, and Elliot's obviously commented again. Um, and then, obviously, I've seen a couple of comments with Lingard. We can't actually, not legally speaking, we can't actually sign Lingard on a pre-contract. That's only European clubs currently at the moment. We can, you know, poke the door and, you know, get in there. Of course, we can speak, but not officially with Canet. That's uh, only European clubs. But speaking of Lingard, that was the next one I wanted to come across because it was it was on, it was off. Uh, it was between us. It was West Ham. And obviously, Luke Edwards uh, just about quarter past two. So that we were back in for Lingard. Now, Johnny, about 12, 13 months ago, I said, nah, not for me. But then he came to West Ham and literally blitzed it. Like, bloody hell. This lad, you know, it goes to say if you get a run of games, what he can do. And I feel it's a miss. I generally feel it's a miss because behind the striker, those three players, none of them chip in with enough goals. None of them score enough, bring in assists. Lingard will give you that if he plays 10, 15 games. Look, Jesse Lingard is Premier League proven. He's experienced. He's an England national. This was a deal that got you excited. It got you excited. And you're thinking, wow, yeah. He, he, if, he, if he stays fit, he will make an impact at any club and he will, in Newcastle's case, keep us up. I, I, I think that's how much of a big of a deal it was trying to bring in Jesse Lingard. I just think, and obviously I'm not going to mention what exactly has happened in the last 24 hours, but I think that has that incident or that, you know, allegation. The big story in Manchester United, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I think that might have been a a factor why maybe Jesse Lingard is still a Manchester United player right now because I don't think they would have let both Donny van der Beek and Jesse Lingard leave. Manchester United unless something like that happened I really don't I think when you look at it now Donny van der Beek's gone to Everton he's pretty much decided that was going to happen and they probably thought no we'll keep Jesse Lingard we'll, we'll take the gamble we'll take the sacrifice of losing out on, on on money from him now and let him go on a free in the summer because he, he was going to go anyway so it, it's disappointing it, it's disappointing that that couldn't be done it seems like Newcastle tried everything to get that deal done without being made a mug of. And I kind of admire that, to be fair. I don't think we should be made a mug of. I don't think we should pay £10, £12 million pounds if Newcastle stay up to Manchester United. I think it's stupid. I think four or £5 million pounds is a fair price. I really, really do. It doesn't matter if you're Norwich City, Man United or Bristol Royals or whoever. You know, I think you don't want to be taken for mugs. So I think it's, I think it's, I think it's a good decision for what Newcastle have done in terms of the financial thing. But... As, as soon as it, as it was getting later and later in the day, I just had this awful feeling that it wasn't going to happen, in my, in my opinion. I think if it was going to be done, it would have been done early on. I think he would have woken up basically saying, Jesse Lingard's on his way to Newcastle. But it is what it is. I think Dave's kind of just basically agreeing that obviously Man United have lost Van Der Beek and obviously the situation with Greenwood uh, is why Lingard isn't uh, being let go. Um, so, yeah, we can understand that. Um, we'll switch the focus again and... Um, Again, we'll come to this one. Obviously, um, Lee Wright has gone on to say that Newcastle uh, yet to shut the door, any deal uh, with the wish list. They remain active and working behind the scenes. And obviously, by the time dinner time had come in, we knew that both Matt Target and Dan Byrne were in the training ground. Keith Downey obviously was being reported, bless him, he must have had a busy day because he's been inside that car park all day. And obviously, he's had um, some disastrous news with his, with his car. And if he's got a higher car, don't know. Don't know. Couldn't tell you. Hope he's okay. I just hope he was okay. That was the, that was the, the the biggest thing. Like I say, it looked it looked awful. Yeah, it did look horrendous, didn't it? And Fabrizio Romano, who Johnny spoke to, uh, would have been about a week ago, ten days ago, and he's gone on to say it's getting more complicated. The Hugo and Kiki, uh, Johnny says, um, no, Ekiki, yeah, yeah, no full full agreement on the player side. There's also problems remaining in the future sale clause aspirations as well. And obviously, he's mentioned about Lingard as well. It's Paul Merson, Diego Carlos. That went flat, didn't it? Um, Newcastle pushed, and obviously I'll talk about Sven Botman and Diego Carlos in a moment. Um, Deli Ali, is that someone that we've, we've missed out on there, Johnny? It's, uh, obviously, we've had Louis on the channel before. He's a, he's a big Evertonian. 
Um, I'll probably try and get him on before the game on Tuesday. We'll do a preview with him. But I said to him, it was like, do you know when you have two, when say me and you were captains, say, because obviously there's a bit of an age gap, so we wouldn't be at the same school, but um, or the same year. But if say we were, Lee, let's let's put it put it I'm out there. We pick, and, we, and we were picking players to put uh, to go on our team. And do you know when you got two players left, and you think. I don't really want any of them, and, the, and then the other one's like thinking, no, "I don't want any of them." I felt like that was you can go and go. <laughs> exactly. New, I think I, I felt like that's what Newcastle and Everton were with Deli Ali. It was like a fight that none of us really wanted to be in, uh, which just shows how far Deli Ali's gone down in the pecking order. Newcastle fans weren't really excited by it. Everton fans are, again, not overly thrilled with it. However, he has got a little bit of talent. He has got a bit of talent. I think it's. It's about the work rate. It's about actually wanting to succeed in football with Dali Ali. I think he has the capability of doing exceptionally well, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe Everton have got a gem. Maybe he might re, you know, re, uh, ignite. You know, readjust, yeah, ignite his career a little bit because I think that's what he needs to do. That's what he needs to do. But I'm not, I'd have rather Lingard out of Lingard or Ali. However, yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm not gutted by it. I'm not gutted that we haven't got Deli Ali. I have to be honest. It might bang on the arse if he scores the winner next Tuesday, but <laughs> I just, I just, I just don't think. I think it's going to take a little while for maybe any team to see the best of Deli Ali. But we'll see. We'll see. I have to say because they haven't got obviously Van der Beek as well, so they haven't had a bad day. Frank Lampard's first day in the job, which is they, those deals might have already been. Um, Potentially lined up before him. But I want to look at this one. Uh, we will talk a little bit more, more about Jamal Lewis because he was rumoured that his place might be out of um, the 25-man squad, which me and Johnny are going to discuss a little bit later. Um, as obviously as the afternoon went on, we're waiting for Matt Target to come in. Um, and obviously there, there he is. There's Keith there, as I say, uh, inside the training ground, reporting on Hugo Ekidike. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, and obviously Jesse Lingard, um, Merson's let, Paul Merson's on it. Whatever, we're not going to listen to Paul Merson. And there's more about Jesse Lingard. Was it happening? Was it not? And yeah. And then uh, this one came from Craig Hope at around about tea time, five o'clock, that Newcastle have understood to offer a three million pound loan plus four million survival bonus for Jesse Lingard and wait for Man United response. There was some daft rumors going around that Man United want like double figures the other day as well. But um, yeah, I didn't believe that. And obviously, this. Lingard, it was going around for a few hours, the Lingard one. And then, of course, um, Matt Target. We'll talk about that now, Johnny. Um, not someone who excites me, I'm not going to lie. I know I sound very negative there. But Eddie Howe's gone out and say uh, he, was important, uh, he has important Premier League experience and the know-how at this level. So I'm really pleased that we've been able to add him to the squad. And Matt's gone on to say, me, fa- me uh, family and friends are here. And they've always said it's a football mad city. So to experience it and be part of it. I'm really looking forward to it. So that's good news. And uh, number 13, he'll wear as well. And there he is signing on the dotted line. So, yeah, fantastic that you signed. There's uh, me and dad as well. So what what do you make of the signing then? Uh, we always know that left back was, it's been an issue for quite a while. But I'm not, I'm not excited by it. I think it's a solid signing. But I asked the question, is he better than what we've got? I I, I think he is. I don't think he's better than Richie, don't get me wrong. Defensively. I think he I, look, I think he's I think he's an out and out left back. And I think attacking and defending wise, I think he's better than what we've got. Now, if he's better than what we've got, you would feel a little bit more at ease. You have to you have to understand. I think Newcastle fans have to understand. The market and, and where we're shopping. I still think having a player like Matt Target for six months is actually a good bit of business. I think he solidifies, solidifi- I'll try and get my word out, Solidified. solidifies us defensively. Going forward, I think he has, he's got a good cross on him. He hasn't nicked him with the odd goal. I'm not expecting him with 10 goals from that at the end of the season, anything stupid like that. But I just think he can help out with crosses on either side. You've got Trippier getting crosses in, Fraser getting crosses in, and now you've got Matt Target getting crosses in for Chris Wood. Chris Wood's got a... There's a lot of pressure on Chris Wood now to deliver and get goals for the next couple of games with Aaron Wilson being out now. So, 
I think it's going to be really, really interesting to see how that left-hand side develops. Has he got that relationship? Or is there going to be a good relationship with him and Alan St. Maximum? Um, I think it's... And the thing is, he's Premier League proven. He's played Premier League football the whole season. It's only the last two games he hasn't played because the Everton the bought, uh, the Villa bought the 15 from Everton anyway. So it makes Everton weaker this, as well. What make, so what do you make of this comment from uh, Kudas that says, Lewis underrated, target isn't much better. But then all he's gone on to say... He's not up for the fight. As soon as, he, as, soon as D- Lucas Dina comes, doesn't want to, doesn't want to, doesn't want to be up for the fight. You can that look harsh? at that one or two, a little bit, because you can look at it one or two ways. You can say, oh, maybe he's not for the fight, and that he's not going to get a play with Villa. But let's be realistic. If ever, if 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 you're Aston Villa and you're spending twenty five million pounds on a player, if you're Aston Villa, you're going to be starting that player week in week out, regardless, unless the the form is really that bad. He's probably thinking. I want to play football. I want to start on week in, week out. He's been given a chance to sign for Newcastle on loan with, I think there's an option to buy in there of £20 million. Now, if I'm, if I'm Newcastle, or if I'm at Target rather, I'm thinking, yeah, I want to do that deal. I want to go to Newcastle. I'll play week in, week out. The only game I will be able to play is Villa um, a week on Sunday. But apart from that game, I'll be able to play. And I don't have to play championship football if we get relegated. And if, we, if Newcastle stay up, likelihood is Newcastle will be doing some sort of a deal hopefully I don't think it'd be £20 million but I'm hoping there might be a bit of negotiation with that but um, yeah, I, 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 from the player side I think it's a win-win from Newcastle's side it's a win if Newcastle stay up and he has some sort of impact yeah. I'm just I don't know Just it reminds me of um, it's, this is a Ashley signing do you know when it's like it's a, it's a loan yeah. it's the last thing yeah, because we've been so used to that. Well, can, like you remember, kind of like, can, can you remember when Rafa was in charge and Newcastle, Newcastle wanted to get Matt Target in on loan? Because he was Southampton's yeah, second, yeah. he was Southampton's second choice fullback, and we needed a fullback, and we asked to try and get him on loan. And Southampton wouldn't let us get him on loan. That's that's how bad it was at one point. Um, but I, look, I, 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 I'm trying. Let's try and be a bit more optimistic on him. Let's see what happens because. Likelihood is he's going to start against Everton then. Everton the week tomorrow, and he's and he's played Everton already this season for Villa. Villa won three. I think Villa won. Did Villa win? Uh, Villa Park between Villa and Everton. I feel like Villa must have beaten Everton because I feel like Rafa got beat there. I think it was like two or three nil or something. So it was early on. In, it was yeah, it was early on in the season. So um, look, I, I think it, it it's, it's a sensible signing. I think you look at that new back four now which I know I'll, I'll not spoil, but that new back four looks a lot better than it did at the start of January, potentially. So we'll see where we are. We will. Um, I'm not... Look, he's got to go out and convince me. When, as soon as he crosses that white line, I'm cheering for him, but I don't know. I don't know. Um, it's a safe sign. Do, do, you know, do you know what his middle name is? Well, it's not Lee, is it? No, it's on. <laughs> oh, fuck. Jesus, <laughs> Johnny. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Rob? Good old Rob when Rob was on the channel. Um, right, well, have a look at the statement that Reams put up because that's what I was up to next. I was trying to look for it earlier on, but there it is. So you can see that uh, they've agreed here. And despite the offers made, Hugo Enkidi en- has said that start the rounds. Uh, I have decided by mutual agreement to continue the adventure together. Uh, so we talked a little bit about this um, and we started to see as the evening came in a few of the under 23s being linked out uh, Matty Bonswell a uh, great left back Pacey gets up and down like a modern full back I think that's a great move for him obviously we signed him from Germany Leipzig so yeah fantastic move for Matty and no doubt over on NFTV Extra we'll be keeping it up to date uh, with the progress on there I'll be doing a video on the under 23s who have all um, left and Obviously, the new signing which he scored tonight, which will come on to very shortly. Um, so we'll go for the timelines. Obviously, Aaron Ramsey one was a bit of a bit of a left field one, can't arrange his mind because uh, you know I know Juventus are playing a large chunk of their wages still, but I thought that was a bit um, very surprising because yeah. I think to massive coup yeah. that I think I think it's better than Rangers. No disrespect to them, um, but yeah, but yeah, uh, under twenty three. As I say, there's Westendorf who, who signed. Uh, a couple of weeks ago from the under-23s and Cameron Ferguson. So, good win for the under-23s. It's nice to see that they're starting to win, but like uh, the ladies, which is fantastic, at Bamiyang at Barcelona. Um, and Sven Bottom came out and said, uh, New- everyone says about Newcastle, it's all about money, but it's a very nice project. So, it kind of kind of hinted on in that he's, he's he talked about Milan as well coming in for him, Johnny. And 
there was definitely interest there. It sounded like he wanted to go, but for whatever reason, it didn't happen. But he's already told in a quote that he's leaving Lille. These are his last few months. Do you see Newcastle going in for Botman again, or do you go Carlos again in the summer? Depends who we stay up. It's as simple as that. Assuming we do. Assuming we do. Assuming, assuming we do, then yes. Now, the way you've spoken about Newcastle a little bit, it was like, yeah, I was, I was up for that. I was really up for that. Look, every player now that comes to Newcastle permanently is going to have that tag, oh, you're there just for the money. But look, I have to be honest, I, I'm not really bothered at the minute. I might be bothered in a few years' time, but I'm not bothered now because we need to improve. I'm sick and tired of players that haven't been good enough not coming to Newcastle and earning half decent money. So I'd rather someone earn good money who's actually a good player. So I think I think Botman is obviously a top, top talent. Or otherwise, you wouldn't be getting all these big, big clubs looking at him. I just think having Newcastle missed the boat. That's my only issue. If Newcastle stay up and other clubs have been watching him, say other clubs are scouting him from now at the end of the season, will, will he be more tempted to go to a Champions League club and think rather rather than... Can you have me cat howling? Oi! Behave yourself. I think I'm going to shit, I'm shit yourself there. <laughs> but, um, but no, I, I think that's the only thing that we, can, we might miss out if, if uh, other clubs are sniffing around. And this is the problem as well because Newcastle... It's almost like everyone knows who Newcastle are after now. Like, especially the fact that we didn't get Diego Carlos, we didn't get Sven Botman. It's like, well, Newcastle are looking at them anyway and they'll probably want to get them in the summer. The summer is going to be huge if Newcastle stay up. It's going to be absolutely ridiculous. I'm not saying Newcastle are going to get 12, 15 players, but the amount of players we're going to be linked with is just going to be absolutely stupid if we stay up. But um, I just hope we don't... I just hope we don't regret not bringing in a centre half in the calendar of a Botman or a Diego Carlos, considering we have bought in a centre half, which we'll touch about touch on about. But if he was to get injured, for example, we'll back a square one. Yeah, it's great. Uh, Johnny's just switched over from um, Twitch back over at YouTube. We are live on Twitch as well. If you have not following us on Twitch, it's simple Newcastle fans TV. Uh, Elliot Anderson, um, I think this is a move that he's probably needed for a while because he's been on the verge of a he's been trained with the first team he's obviously played two games against Arsenal won the FA Cup one in the league and he's got himself a loan out of Bristol Rovers so it's good good division from league two and obviously he was looked at Luton and Sheffield Wednesday but um, both championship clubs opted against him so he's got a Bristol Rovers and I think he'll do good things there obviously he's done the great things with the FA Youth Cup last season as well had a bit of an injury but yeah he needs he needs game time I was a little bit surprised Joe White didn't get, them, get a move out but Great yeah. move, Elliot. You did. Who did you go to? Hartlepool. I did. Right, I missed that then. Right, okay. Fair enough. I missed that one. Uh, but well done, Joe White. Ignore me. Matty Langstaff also. He hasn't. doesn't look like he's got the move, as far as I can see. Uh, a loan switch to Mansfield. Uh, that doesn't look like that's happened, unless it goes through the paperwork's already done. And, of course, we're moving it in the final hour here, um, which Elliot Anson's talked about his move to Bristol Rovers there. And then Dan Byrne which we'll talk about next. Uh, he goes on to say, I'm buzzing to be here. I never thought I'd be in this position to be a Newcastle player and to be around St. James Park. It's something that I've dreamed of since I was a kid. Obviously, he's a Newcastle fan. Um, and he's gone on to say, Eddie Howes went, uh, I'm delighted to bring Dan back in the North East. He knows exactly what it means to represent the club. And it will be a big presence for us on and off the pitch. Literally, literally. Uh, we've been very keen at the competition defensively and Dan fits the profile we have been looking for. He's naturally left footed, which provides us further balance to our back line. And it'll be a great addition uh, to the squad. And of course, Brighton have obviously um, wished him well, which is nice to see because you don't always say that with transfers. So that was nice of Brighton. And there he is in the tune shirt, uh, which is fantastic to see. Um, again, I'm going to sound dead negative. It's not something that really excites me. Um, I think he's been third choice behind, because I, I think if we sign the other two, Botman or Carlos, I don't think Dan Byrne signs, to be honest with you. Either. He's not even, He's probably not even been third choice. I would say he's probably been about fifth choice by the summer, because he got Barry Ashile that was linked Yeah, heavily, heavily as well. And then obviously you've got your Botmans and your Carlosses as well. So you're probably fourth or fifth choice. But again, 
He's another player with Premier League experience. He's never been relegated. We've got to try and remember all this. As much as it, you know, the big names and the marquee Oi. names are, fant- are fantastic. If your cat, nice I'll tell you what, if your cat interferes In with this video, yeah, and over speaks me, I'm going to kick off. Um, <laughs> I'm only joking. Um, but no, but in all seriousness, um, yeah, he's got Premier experience, and Brighton and Newcastle both got promoted at the same time. And Brighton have never been relegated. They've obviously had their little touchy moments, but on the whole, I've never read. It's never gone down to the last day for Brighton, and he's played a part in there. And Brighton fans are devastated to an extent that he's that he's left uh, Brighton to come to Newcastle, but understand it. They're getting good money for him, thirty million pounds all in all, eleven million straight up, and then two million in add-ons. I would imagine that two millions if Newcastle stay up. So, and again, he's a local lad. He's a local lad who will. Is he better than what we got? Is he better than what we got? At centre half. Is he centre half? I would, I would say so. Yeah. Oh, I don't think it's clear. Mind. I don't. I think they're all. I think Dan. Dan is Dan Byrne any better than Fabian Shea? Different players. I know players. they are, but if you if you Lascelles will play. I think that's no, but he's a, he's a left footed centre half though, so it's a bit more natural. It is Matt Target, like... Matt Target, left footed left back. Fabian Cher, right footed right centre half. Trippier, right footed right back. That's your back four now. I know Jamal Lascelles is your club captain. And he but will that's play. Your back, that, uh, but will he? I think he will, he's club captain. I, I don't. I disagree. I, just, I, I would disagree. love. To, I, I would. Look, I would love to see him come out. I'm not going to argue that. I just think because he's got the captaincy, I think matter. most captains play week in week out, unless yeah, you mark captains. Noble. Unless most you captains. mark Noble. Yeah, but I'm. Yeah, but the thing is though, they were in a predic- predicament. Now, Jamal Sells might be injured. He came I'll out take against Leeds. Problem. problem. I'll take. But, right, I think. Yeah. I think it's useless. I, he hasn't. He hasn't had his best season. I wouldn't go as far to say he's, he's useless, but Fabian Cher oh, yeah, well, playing better useless. than him. Fabian. Fabian Cher, Fabian Cher was the best centre half on the pitch against Leeds last week. He's probably been Newcastle's best centre half for the last two months, three months since since uh, Eddie Howe's come in. And he, at the minute, I think it will be Cher and Burn as your he, two centre halves. Dan Burn. The good thing is he he has got a deceiving. Bit of pace as well. I know he's like six foot five, six foot six. He's a big, big lad. And from Definitely. set pieces, might might be. He's, he's a big, big. He's a big lad. And from set pieces from both ends, it's gonna it's gonna be a little bit more of an advantage for once because we've got someone who's a big lad, and it might help other players benefit because they we might be all attracted to him. So I think. Look, I'm I'm a bit more optimistic on this one than I am with Matt Target, but. I just think the fact that he, he wanted to, he's a Newcastle fan as well, which helps. You know, you can already see the chant mm. now. Dan Byrne, he's one of our own. So I, I just think it's a bit, it's, it's sensible. Two and a half year deal. And he would stay if Newcastle got, in, in Newcastle, if Newcastle were to get relegated. So I think it's a win win for the player and for the club, regardless of which division they're in next season. But of course, it, we hope that we're in the Premier League. But there's no, there's he, a lot of with me, man. There, Johnny, in the comments saying that Lascelles. No, I, 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 I can understand that, but I think Eddie Howe's ruthless enough to go. Who's my best centre half pairing? I don't think he's bothered it in in the in the sense of Jamal Lascelles has to just Jamal Lascelles have to play. Rafa Benitez has dropped Jamal Lascelles. Steve Bruce dropped Jamal Lascelles. I'm sure Eddie Howe's not, you know. I think did, that, didn't Rafa. That, to, Didn't Rafa drop them because it was a Spurs game when Shelby got sent off, wasn't it? I think it was yeah, that he game. Him, he didn't he him, he start he the didn't, season. Wasn't it? He didn't want to play left sided centre back. Yeah, that's so what I mean. So he came on half time, didn't he? Yeah. And then that's what I'm saying. I just I just think I just think you people have got to realise this is that football's such a short game, you can't really be loyal to a lot of players unless they've got star star quality. Come on, so, then, if you want to come on camera, how are you? Yeah, no, get, uh, no, it may as well just get her on, get her on. But um, no, in all seriousness, I think I, 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 I could. You, you've got to drop the cells if you're bringing in a 13 million pound defender, oh, and yeah, probably if, Charles playing better than him. I think the the two target and Dan Byrne are good squad players. 
And I know where we are in the league. I probably wanted a little bit more. Of course I did, but it didn't excite me. I don't think that makes our starting eleven massively greater. I think it does for the squad, but not for me. Not for me. I'm not... I'm not so keen on that one. Sorry to be negative. I will be more positive um, a little bit later because uh, I want to take a look at the squad, Johnny. We've got 31, well, 29 first team players here, which um, I want to bring up here. Uh, and this is obviously Wikipedia. We're very, very quick. Somebody updated Dan Byrne uh, very, very quick. Yeah. And obviously, you take Dan Langley out and Matty Longstaff because they don't need to be registered, but four players have got to go. Who's going? Because there was rumours tonight that Kieran Clark and Jamal Lewis weren't going to be in that in the twenty five man squad. I think Jeff Hendrick is pretty pretty obvious. Well, Jeff Hendrick was linked with the move to QPR, and before I came on this stream, he hadn't gone. But I've got a list of twenty eight, so I'm trying to work out who. If I put somebody on twice, um. I'm actually trying, I'm actually counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 11, 12, 15, 16, 17, 18, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 31. I'll, I'll use your list that you've got there. So there's 31. 31. So, Obviously, yeah, so Langley, Langley and Longs. I've done your registered. I think Hendrick will be one of them. Yes, I agree. So that leaves you with 28. Is that right? Fernandez, do you reckon? Or Clark? I think Clark's more likely to be not involved in the 25-man squad than Fernandez. My reason is Paul Dummett could do a job as a left foot oh, centre-half yeah. or a left-back and he's playing better. You've got Richie that can play left-back. You've got Mankiw who can play left-back. You've got Trippier who could, could be both. Left back. It could be both. It could be both. Do you reckon Jamal Lewis who could play left back? See, as well. I think that's incredibly harsh if he he because you couldn't get in the side because Matt Ritchie was playing well, right? And then this season we thought, right, Jamal Lewis is going to come back. He's going to kick on, and he did. He had a run of games for like what was it, four or five games, and then he went off injured. Like, for God's sake, man! When I mean, you want the lad to do well because he's young. And he's got a lot of potential. He can learn a lot. And obviously, Jurgen Klopp wanted the sign him. So he must have something about him. But I, th- I think it'll be incredibly harsh. But I think he is a danger because now you've got Dan Byrne, Paul Dummett, and Matt Target when all fill in there, even Richie. And I- I'd hate not to see Jamal Lewis. I'd be pretty against it, to be honest. But I think it will be Hendrick, Fernandez, Clark, and Lewis. I think there's your four. I'm going. Hendrick I'm going Hendrick Clark hmm. He's debating There is some transfer windows still out there like the Russian yeah, Premier League Yeah I think China's market's still open I'm just I'm just looking at Dwight Gale Directly I'm just looking cut. at I'm just looking at Dwight Gale I, I personally wouldn't cut him because we didn't bring in a striker today, or we didn't bring in a, a forward, um, I would probably, I would probably, I would probably say Jamal Lewis isn't in, in this twenty-five month squad, I and mean, I think it's incredibly harsh. But I, I don't think you ca- I, I don't think you, I don't think Newcastle are in a position to wait for a young player to get better. I think Newcastle have gone, let's get someone that's Premier League Premier League proven yep, in a, yeah. l- like a Matt Target, hoping he stays fit. That's what I think. Yeah, it's a tough one on Lewis because it's a tough one. Uh, definitely, uh, I'll, that's what I'm going to go with. Hendrick, I'm going to say Keon Clark, I'm going to say Federico Fernandez. And I will say, Lewis, they're, they're the four that are going to be dropped when the squad gets announced in a few days' time. They're resubmitted. I think Gale will be staying in. I don't think he'll play. I think it'll just be the strike gang, just in case. Because, uh, but he then to. He has to, because we've literally got nobody else bar Chris Wood. If Chris Wood was to get an injury, we're back to square one. 
unless you played Joe Litton up top and he didn't want to do that, do you? Or unless the SM no, contains up top. It could be Gale. I think Gale's, Gale's a shout, mind. I think Gale is a shout. But I, I, I just don't think he should. I don't think Eddie Howe would. I think if, if, if Eddie Howe was to have brought in if Eddie Howe was to have brought in another striker, say he brought even if he brought in Ekatike, Gale, I think Gale probably would have gone out and a championship club. Yeah, that might have kept Gale in, Hayden, in there. Hayden's a, Hayden's a shout if he's if he's out for the rest of the season. Is there any point in putting putting him in a twenty five man squad if he's out for eight or ten weeks? Eight or ten weeks is what early April. And then by the time he gets a bit of match fitness, you're looking at the end of April, mid to end of April. So there's what four or five games left. Is there any point? Mm, yeah, it's, I, 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 it wouldn't surprise me if Isaac Baden was in the squad. Oh, I, I hope not because I think he can still. I think he's still got something about him at the club. At least as a second oh, choice can. to to Gomez. He can, but for four or five games left of the season. Yeah. Let's talk about some positivity then. So we, we'll um, that'll be a tough one. It'll be an interest. That'll be a video itself. Who gets uh, left out because they're going to be left in the wilderness if they don't get a loan. Um, am I right in saying the championship window for loan players is still open for another week? Was that that is that rule gone? Know. I, I can't think remember. That rule's gone. I think it's. I think it's yeah. only like a main seat, main seat loan for goalkeepers. Oh, right. Probably yeah. the only one. So they might get a loan to the MLS or a Russian Premier League or something daft like that. China, yeah, possibly, rising, but... possibly. Turkey and all um, that. Yeah, Turkey's a shout as well. Um, if we look at um, the transfers that, and um, this is transfermarket.co.uk, that, oh, Florian June, please, Sam's not on this list. Um, for, for going out, these are Newcastle's obviously arrivals. Uh, I don't know why Mutu and Lejeune are classed as arrivals, but, and Freddie Woodman, um, Jake Turner, Mike Longstaff, but really it's going to be Dan Byrne. Kieran Tripp, yeah. We did tell we did sign Willock earlier on the season. Chris Wood, Bruno Gomez, Matt Target. Johnny, who are you most excited about in this window? Um just because I haven't seen a lot of them as Gomez, of course. I think you know, a, a Brazilian you've paid thirty to forty million euro for, you're obviously gonna be a little bit excited to see what he's all about. And I, I think again, he's a player that we've desperately needed. We've needed a central midfielder that can just steady the tempo of a game. And I can't wait to see him, you know, next week against Everton, hopefully. It might, might, might be a bit too soon if he's, if he's coming from Brazil, but you never know. He might want to just play because it's obviously to play in the Premier League and to make a mark. But um, I, I think he'd be really, really exciting. I think, obviously, we know what we're getting a little bit with Target and Burn because we've seen Premier League football for God knows how long, so we kind of know what we're expecting there. And then we've obviously seen Trippier and Wood so far. Trippier's been exceptional. Wood's been steady, just needs a goal. I think I think if Wood was to get a goal against Everton, maybe the winner, for example, I think that would just relax him a little bit. Well, he's, then he's, he's, a, he's a Newcastle player, if you like, the fact that he's got his first goal. But... I'm not worried necessarily. I think if he was to help in terms of his overall play, I think it's 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 good it's good news all around. But yeah, Gamirez, it has to be. I think he's an unknown quantity because a lot of Newcastle fans will say that they know who this bloke is. But let's be honest, if I said to you last week, Lee, who's Bruno Gamirez, you go, I think he plays for Brazil. I think. But you ask wouldn't Steve. You would, ask Steve, yes. Steve would be like, Yeah, man, he plays for like A.S. Leon in the fourth division, he's amazing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he would know that. So, it is what it is for that one. Yeah, Steve Watt has about four or five screens at once. I'm not sure. When. It's, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous his setup. Um, but yeah, mine's, mine's probably trip, yeah, because I'm excited to see what he brings for the rest of the season. Attack and fullback when actually cross. And uh, I think you're right. Bruno Gomez is a little bit unknown for us, too. So, you might come in. Imagine him and Joe Litton set the midfield with Joe Litton's rebirth. The Brazilians ripping it apart, man. Well, like well, two the thing is, it's going to be interesting because surely he's playing as the main pivot in front of the back four. Yeah. He has to. If you're paying that amount of money, you're expecting him to play that position. And I'm guessing there's going to be John Joe Shelby next to him. And then you're expecting Joe Litton to be a tiny bit further forward with your with your three with your three forward players, if that's how you're looking for the for the last few games, 
Uh, William Sane's long staff has got his loan move, so like I said, I don't know if that's, if that's come out permanent, but yeah, it's, we'll see what happens. But um, oh, Matty to Mansfield confirmed a lot of a couple of people putting in the comments as well. Yeah, Matty's cheers, now gone. Cheers, 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 Andy. Appreciate that. Yeah, <laughs> Matty Longstaff to Mansfield. He's one who's needs game time massively, and I think. Oh, fantastic he, move from. He has to play. If he doesn't play, I think he's out the door. Unfortunately. Um, which which yeah. we don't want to happen. Ragnar, smash that like, folks. Yes, please do smash that like. We are live. It is uh, what quarter twelve, and we've got what over four hundred, including on YouTube and Twitch watching. So smash it. Um, but yeah, Bruno Gramares. Um, what I want to do is um, have a look at trying to predict our starting eleven. Now this is going to be tasty. You can play along in the live chat as well. So Johnny. We'll go one by one. I think the goalkeeper, I'll start there. I'll have the easy one. I think that's going to be obvious. I think it's going to be Martin de goal. Mm-hmm. I agree. Wait, go on then, you pick. Do you want to start left or, left or right? I'll go left back and I'll go Matt Target. I think if, if you're bringing him in to do a job, Matt Target's your man. Um, look, I hope Matt Target is a steady Eddie. I hope he is a 7 out of 10 every week and you don't have to worry about him. That's what I'd like from Matt Target. And if you can get the odd, the odd assist and the odd goal along the way, that would be a bonus. But I'm more interested in the partnership with Maxi because Maxi is going to be such an, an important player for Newcastle. And if he's got someone behind him like a Matt Target, hopefully doing you know maybe the dirty side of things, but helping him out attacking-wise, have, hopefully, it's a good move all round. Sorry, I've got to mention Ben and Sai. Congratulations, lads! Hey. <laughs> they, went over, they went over 100k as well, which is absolutely oh, phenomenal. congratulations! Yeah, fantastic bunch of lads. Me and Johnny being on their channel, and obviously, when we go home and away, um, it's great to jump on each of us channels, and we'll always remind them of that day, that hot summer day down the lane when Joe Linton scored the winner. So, yeah, we enjoy, we enjoy Spurs away for just for that reason alone. But yeah, well done, lads! Absolutely fantastic channel, really nice couple of lads genuine as well since here uh we'll go back to um this i'm gonna be i'm gonna be able to take the easy route take the easy one here because i think this next one after uh right back is going to be a little bit tasty so so far we've got martin debrocker johnny reckons my target will start straight away q and trip yeah i think that's an easy one now go on johnny you can have first pick who's going to play center back i think what my two, i can give you my two right now no, you can only have one. You can only have one. If I can only, if I can only have one, left of Matt Target will be damned in. Do you really think? Do you? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Why bring him in? You're not. When did Newcastle spend thirteen million pound and not play a player? He will start next Tuesday if fit against Everton. Yeah, it will be. It, yeah, twenty nine. That's why I'm saying two and a half year deal. So you'd be, you know, thirty one, thirty two. So Dan Burn will start. Hundred percent. And. You've got to remember, against Everton next week, he's going to be up against Dominic Calvert-Lewin, who's not played a lot of football. Burn has ripped, played a lot of football. Just put in there, he ripped Lascelles. It was a couple of years ago, wasn't he? Yeah. That, so, it was at the 2-2 game when we scored two in the last, like, literally second. Yeah, yeah. Plus, uh, Calvert-Lewin was exceptional, actually, that night, even though I don't know how he managed the point, but <sighs> the mind boggles. But, yeah, Dan Burn starts in me. Interesting. Right. I'm going to say it's the captain. Johnny's going to disagree with me with that. I want you in the comments say, not if you want ourselves dropped, will Eddie Howe drop his captain? That's what I want to know from you is all in the comments. Will Eddie Howe drop Jamal Ascells? That's what I, yes, that's what I yes, want to know. Will. Yes, he will. I don't think he will because he's got the captain. That's, that's why. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I know matter. it doesn't matter. I just don't think he will. I just I can't. can't Jim, can't Jamal Lasalle has been a fantastic servant for Newcastle United. He's been a fantastic captain for Newcastle United. I'm not taking that away. By the sign of the spoke catch yesterday, uh, Matthew Ketchel from Reach, um, football editor at Reach, he's, fan- he's a very, very good captain. He's very good around the training ground. He's very good with everybody. But we're asking right now who is Newcastle United's best centre half in that right centre back position? is not Jamal Lascelles. It is Fabian Scher. 
Fabian Scher is a player that Eddie Howe is, is well liked as well because of the type of centre half he is. He's a he's a ball playing central defender who likes to play it out from the back. We don't have many of them at Newcastle. We've got to remember this as well. Dan Byrne, who's played under uh, Graham Potter, has developed his game very very well on the ball as well. I think you've got to play, got to play Fabian Scher. You cannot have. Jamal LaSalle starting unless Fabian Scher is injured just because he's playing better than him. Simple as that. I think probably just in my favour there with um, LaSalle's in the comments, but I just think I kind of see Eddie Howe doing it. Just kind of. So there's your back four. Um, is that a Premier League back four if you take Trippier out? Probably not, in all honesty. I don't think so. That's my personal opinion on it. But we'll move forward. Um, Johnny, you can have um, first pick because I've just picked Lascelles, didn't I? So where would you like to go for the? I would the like to be. In, I'd like, yeah, I'd like to pick the mid in the middle, and I would go Gamirez because again we spent 30, 40 million euro on him, and he's obviously from what people have said, and I'm taking people's other people's word on this. He is a coup for Newcastle United, Arsenal, Manchester United, Juventus have all been looking at this player. You know, I've seen a little clip on uh, TikTok of like Messi looking at him, and it's just, it's just, it, it, it just feels weird. Like I know he's playing for Leon, but it's like Messi kind of looks at him, kind of it's like that respect of like, oh, I know you, I know you're a good player, and it was like, wow. <laughs> if he thinks he's a good player, then we should all just shut up and just watch him. So, Gamirez, I would, I don't know if you can move Gamirez on your screen, Lee, but just a tiny bit further yeah. back. You can't, so we'll nah, just we'll just have to leave it at just leave it at that. But that's what I think. That's what I think his role will be. I don't. I'm I'll let Johnny have it, but I don't think he'll start just because of the travelling with Brazil. But I would love to see him start against Everton without it, a shadow of a doubt. Is this this is this the starting eleven for Everton that we're doing? Just what or we think will be. Yeah. Eleven in general. Well, yeah, just general because I wouldn't play Lascelles if it was my pick. I wouldn't have Lascelles yeah. in my squad. I just don't think Eddie Howe will drop him. So, okay, yeah, it's, it's basically for the next game, effectively. Mm-hmm. Or if any, if everybody's fit, I guess. Could look at it that way. Mm-hmm. But enough. I'll pick the next one. And I think it will keep Joe Litton there. I really do. Because he's reborn. And I think also having someone who speaks the same language next to them will definitely help. The interesting to see the dynamics between the two, whether they get close, become pals. Um, that'd be interesting. I think that's probably likely to happen. Because I can't imagine there'd be too many Portuguese speakers in that Newcastle whole squad. They're probably the only the two, probably the only two. But I think with Joe Lytton. you got the next one, Johnny. Because does uh, he drop John uh, Dalby? For who though? I don't think he will. Because I think John is he dropping, is he, is he dropping John Joe Shelby for though? <laughs> Sean Longstaff. It's, it's just not happening. Look, Joe, is it? look Sean, Sean Longstaff and Joe Willock play exceptional. In the, in the second half against Leeds, they were both brilliant. Well, I just think, I just think to be honest, I would if it depends because it to get the best out of Joe Linton, you play a four three three. To get the best out of certain other players, I think you play a four two three one. I, I, I honestly do. I think if well, if you want Shelby a bit further back with Gamirez. I think you play four two three one, and maybe you, maybe it's not even a four two three one. It's more of a four two one three. If you want, if you want to play it like that, it's a bit weird how I can think about it in my head. But yeah, four two, Joe Litton just above Shelby and Gamirez, and then the three up front. So that's what I think it could be. Give Joe Litton a bit of a free license further forward, just to kind of, um, you know, try and you know create chances and break play up a little bit in you know, the opposition's defensive third. So I, I, I would probably say Shelby gets the nod for me in that, in that three. I think he's been a better player, to be honest, since Eddie Howe's come he's in. Been, yeah, I, just, I, thought, I think he's been given, he's been given the confidence, hasn't he? Yeah, I still think there's another level that he can possibly get to because he needs to chip in with more goals. He's got the ability. But that's an interesting three, that, because you've got... It'll be interesting if um, Gimeras does sit. Does that give John Joe Shelby a bit of a license to get 10 yards further forward and play a little bit further forward? So it'll be interesting to see how that gets on because we know Joe Litton's more of a, a battle axe and like a runner in there. 
So that's an interesting three uh, against Everton as well. Um, I'm going to pick the easy one here. Sorry, Johnny. Because I know Callum Wilson would normally go straight in my lineup, uh, but we know that Callum Wilson is injured. So that's um, an easy one for me. I'm going to go Chris Wood. I think he will start. I think he will start. It'd be interesting when Callum Wilson does come back, whether um, Eddie Howe changes the formation, plays both of them, or rotates even one or the other, for depending on the uh, opposition. So, again, gives us more squad depth when uh, Wilson is back. He's still a few weeks away. Uh, go on then, Johnny. You can pick left or right. I think these. Are, I think the. I think the front three picks itself. I think it's very, very. I think it's very, very easy. I think on the left you've got Alan seeing an accident, and I'll obviously let you go on the right. But I think it's very, it's very, very easy because they're the, the two players that have been on form really for these. And obviously, you have got Ryan Fraser there. Yeah, I think that picks itself. I think I would be very surprised if this wasn't the the team that plays against Everton. I think everyone's saying oh, he can't drop the souls for being captain or whatever. I expect Fab being shared in that position. I'd be amazed if he's not. But I think that I think that I think that's that team pretty much picks itself if all fit. Yeah, Ryan Fraser, I like you see him get a get a get a few assists, get a few goals, and uh, he links up well with um with Wilson. So hopefully Wilson comes back soon and. And then it gives you a little bit of bit of a, a bit stronger on the bench. I, I still think the bench may look a little bit weak, but when Wilson is back, you can have the option of the two strikers. Um, interesting one though. We talked about this the other day. Obviously, that's our squad that we think that'll be for Everton. One or two disagreements for me and Johnny, but overall, I think it's um, probably get eight or nine of them. Probably right. Um, Miguel Miron. Um, do you think there could have been a chance that he could have went this summer? Uh, this winter, sorry. Uh, I think his agent probably would have tried it. I think his agent would have probably wanted the one to move for him. I I think Mickey's happy at Newcastle. If he's speaking to Miggy himself, I think his agent would probably want him to go um, abroad. But the thing is, what, I think it, his agent must think he's unbelievable at times because his agent's trying to. He's doing his job, I suppose. He's trying to get a bigger club than Newcastle in the sense of can he play for an Atletico Madrid kind of team or teams like that because that's where he probably thinks he, he, he should be playing for. But no assists, no goals. Defensively, runs his arse off. But we all know his best position is the number 10. But it's that final pass. It's so poor. Yeah, he's so got no right foot. He's got no right foot. Got no right, he's got no right foot. I'll tell you what this comment with Sean says. I think he'll be gone in the summer. I really do. Yeah, I think so not. do I. Yeah, so I don't know. It doesn't matter what division Newcastle are in next year. I think he'll be gone anyway. But I, he, he's just—I oh, I, I agree with Ollie. I think he's—I think his best league would be in Serie A. I really, yeah, like, I, really do. I think, yeah, oh yeah, because it's so slowed down. You, you you like the more technical kind of player. Um, I think he would thrive in Italy, Spain. I'm, I'm not too sure. I think you can argue you could possibly do a similar Is job. I think he has got technical ability, but I think Italy would be. I think Italy would suit him down on the ground. I could see him playing for who's like a mid-table team in Italy, like Lazio, maybe, and that would be an ideal move for him. But again, Miggy's not a Premier League player for me. I think it's Championship. I think he's useless. And I've gone off in big time, and I know that's I'm coming across as quite harsh tonight, but I just think nah, he's not Premier League. He's not a Premier League player for me. He's just no, he's, got he's, he's Premier League. Oh, I don't. But, I think it's I think it's useless. Uh, I would say I would no, say he's Premier, he's, Premier, he's Premier League, but I, I don't think he's a great Premier League player. No, I think I think nah. If you want, to, if you want, um, if you're trying to hang on to one 0 lead and you want to bring him on, great, he's great for that. But that's our nah. I've just gone off in big time. I've probably been too critical of him, but even Joe Willock is another one as well. There's an what's uh, Fordy saying there? Look at Johnny come around the idea about Miggy. I told. <laughs> Who's this, who is this, who's this forty? Who is this forty bloke? I've not seen him in Newcastle. Every, every, every time, 40, every time forty comes on camera, and criticizes a player. They go out and do well the next game. Exactly. exactly. So, I, I, honestly, I, I thought if I thought um, forty was a proper Newcastle fan, but you need to come to a game. Maybe you should get him to West Ham. Uh, uh, get, get him at Brentford. Watch, 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 him, watch him come. Watch him come back with a, with a new Newcastle top. You know, at the next. Forty's new signing. All these new signs. Oh yeah, Brad. Brad, I've always supported Newcastle. Bye. Um, oh, miss you, miss you, Fordy. 
Oh, that'd be good. There you go. Totally with us a roadrunner. Um, we'll we'll do a wrap up um, just overall with the the January transfer window. Obviously today there's been hits and misses today. Um, probably the big one is Hugo and Kitty uh, wasn't signed over the line. That's probably the FTK. FTK. Right, I don't have to say anymore because he's not our player. But um, if you look at it overall, you know, spent like nearly nearly towards ninety million. You've got to think of the sell. God, we've been so starved of it for years and years and years under Ashley. And they've spent big on Chris Wood in particular, Guimaraes in particular, getting an England international signed as well. Uh, the other two I'm not so keen on, Dan Byrne and my target, but the, the first three there, they've put money where the mouth is and they've tried to go after a centre-back and chucking money about up towards 40 million. So, Bigger spenders in Europe, says Jason as well, in this January transfer window. Everyone knew we were going to go and spend, but overall with the owners, do you think they've done everything that they can, surely? I think they've done as much as they physically could. I think there was a fine line not to be completely stupid and be trapped like a mug and go, yeah, we'll pay £12 million for Jesse Lingard, even though we know it's only six months and it's only a loan deal or pay you know, such and such a Botman and Carlos and whatever. They didn't want to be trapped like mugs, and I, I, I respect that. I do respect that. Um, I respect it, but I think we needed to, we needed to really break the bank for a centre half. What do, what, really... do, what do you make of um, the comparisons I've seen today? I listened to uh, Talksport. I seen it on Twitter. Um, Newcastle didn't really make a statement signing. Whereas Manchester City um, did with Rubino. Yeah. yeah. Manchester City were mid table. Manchester City probably needed two or three wins to stay in the division that year. They weren't Newcastle where they need two or three wins to be a little bit more comfortable from not being relegated. Um I, look, when you look at it, ninety million pounds more or less. That's a hundred million pounds they could have spent more on if they really wanted to. But that hundred million could be saved for the summer to spend on more Hendrickson, players if Newcastle stay up. So that's good. That's good. That's good for the player and it's good for the club. Um, so there we go. We're, we're right about Henrik. We've got some yeah, right. But, yeah, but that's 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 good for the player and good for the club. Like as much as I know Jeff Henry's been getting the piss taken out of him, you know, he's been a professional, plays when he gets asked to play. We know he's not good enough, but the championship is his, is his level. So it's a it's a good it's a it's a good move for both uh, club and player. But my my issue is not with the owners now. I think the owners have done as as to a to to a point have done as much as they physically could. I think without being stupid, I think it's all on Eddie Howe now, and that's where your question's got to be. With the players that we've bought in, the five players we've bought in, is Eddie Howe good enough as a coach, as a manager, to get the group of players now? These group of players, are, can he get the best out of them to keep them out of the bottom three? And the, probably the second question to that, are these five players that we've bought in made us a better squad than Norwich City, than Watford and Burnley? And if, if, if both those answers are yes, then we should be fine. But my, I still feel a bit on the fence that I don't know if Eddie Howe's good enough as a manager to get the best out of these players and quickly. That's that's my only worry. But that was our BBC, York, BBC Yorkshire reporter, Matt Livingston there reporting live from his phone. Uh, that's why you heard that ping that Jeff Hendrick <laughs> has uh, left the building. So that's good news. Gets some wages for a few months and gets uh, a move. Um, yeah, people are seeing in the comments there, Bruno Guimaraes is the statement signing. I mean, Johnny aren't at the experts here. Yeah, we don't know much about him, but we'd love to be proved wrong. And towards the end of the season, hopefully he does come out and, you know, bosses the midfield. That's what we want. And the squad is better. There's um, the two signings. There's probably Trippier. I'm excited. Obviously, I know Trippier. Bruno Guerra is a little bit underknown. Good squad players and Dan Byrne and Matt Target. I think Johnny's going to disagree with that. But I think the squad players are best. Um, 
And um, Chris Wood, who we hope he can get some service, but I do think if the both fit, I think it's Callum Wilson first, Chris Wood second. Yeah, I, yeah, I think he'll be on the bench if, the, if we are playing one up top. But again, gives her options. And if we do stay up, fingers crossed, the um, June and July and August will be a very, very interesting few months um, for Newcastle United. Is. But um, we'll give it a scoreline. That's what I like to do. It we'll like to score the players, but we'll score the overall January transfer window. I said we said at the beginning, didn't we? I'm going to score that in eight. I think realistically, they have gone out the owners. You kind of deny that they've gone out and tried to chase, spend money. They've spent big, and they could have spent a lot more, but they didn't get Hugo. I'm just going to, I'm just going to call him Hugo or one of the two centre backs, Carlos and Botman. So I think it's eight out of ten. Um, every single one of them has experience in the Premier League bar one. So but one of them is a Brazilian at national. So I think it's good. I think it's a good window. Could be could be better. I'm going seven. I'm going seven. I'm going eight. I think we could have done with a better centre half. Even though I think Dan Bunn could agree. still be a good could still be a good player and I still think we needed an attacking player today. But um it's more I'm not annoyed with the owners because it, you can tell that the owners are trying. And this is what we say. We did. We don't demand a club that wins. We demand a club that tries. And they were trying. You could tell you, with all the reporters. They're all saying the same thing. Newcastle were trying. Got, there's so many different players over the January transfer window. It wasn't for the lack of effort. I think it was just maybe if Newcastle were a little bit higher on the table, I think Newcastle probably would have got these players because um, they, maybe there wouldn't have been that chance of relegation. But there is a, it's still a, a big, big chance that Newcastle could get relegated. But I think as much as we think this is a good window, I'll put the question to you, Lee. Are Newcastle staying up? I'm more optimistic now because I'm excited at what um, Gomeros can bring. I think, although we've got Chris Wood, I still want Callum Wilson back as quickly as possible because Wood's very static, isn't he? He's whereas, one-dimensional. Yeah, whereas Wilson has a little bit more about his game. Um, and... Yeah, the, the midfield looks a little bit more stronger. The squad looks better in case of injuries because, thankfully, Matt Ritchie will never play left-back this season again, I don't feel, because we've got it covered. Yeah. But um, I think we'll, I think we will. Um, I've never been wanting to say that we've been relegated. Um, I've been close to, but I, haven't, I think I'm one of the few on the channel, I believe. Uh, yes, I think we will. I think we will start picking up points. And I think we will go, we'll go through some stages this season where we might lose three or four on the bounce. I think that's national. The squad isn't... The first start eleven isn't fully what we want, but there'll be times where we'll pick up more wins, and I think the defense will gradually get better. Yes, what about you, Johnny? Yeah, I think we will, but I, I think it'll just we need. I think we. I think the next six games are crucial. Great comment. Woods a bit stiff. It is, isn't it? No comment. Um, no, I, I think. I think. Um, I think we will stay up. I think we will stay up. But I think it'll be very, very close. I just think next. I think Sam made a good point yesterday. I think the next six games are crucial. When you look at who we've got in the next six games, Everton and Villa back to back at home with big games. West Ham away is going to be tough, but not. We've seen Leeds obviously go there and win. Brentford winnable, and then Brighton at home. We don't win against Brighton, but we need to win against Brighton. Um, and I think that, that, then it's Chelsea, which I'm expecting us to, to lose anyway. But five of the next six games, we've got to be looking at three wins, in my opinion. Three wins from your next five takes us to 24. Is that right? Yeah. It gives us a chance. It gives us a chance. It does. And I think... Um... Callum Wilson, and in particular, Alan St. Maximum, I would be delighted that the squad has been, especially ESM, because that's why he signed the contract and he's probably been given promises that players are coming once the takeover. If the takeover happens, then it's, that'll please him because he'll want to play with better players. But that is it for me and Johnny. We've done tons of videos for you the last two days. We've done all the women's stuff. Uh, we've done uh, the Greenwood Muller show last night. We've done four, five videos today. Johnny was live. I did a video call me. Yeah, this is the fifth one of today, so we're absolutely knackered. Um, but yes, we're going to love you and leave you. See if you can smash that like. Go back and have a look at all the reactions of all the, all the sign-ins today. Have a good night, everyone. Ta-da.